Okay. So we'll come back from our break. So I want to review some of the stuff that we did previously so we can get all caught up. And then we will proceed with new topic. So I have uh, put together uh, some of the stuff that we already did. Okay, so it's, uh, we're going to go over it again. Okay, and, and we're going to use a new um, data file. So that's MT cars. So um, please go ahead and download these two. And we're going to start with uh, this chapter nine recap first. When is your second test? Okay. Second test is during the exam time. Okay. In the exam week. That will be starting from Tuesday next week. Will it be like in class? No, it will be like exam one. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So everybody same page. So open this one in uh, Jupyter. Okay, so that's, that's what we're going to work on first. This will be like a recap. And I've made a couple of tweaks. So I'll go over them as well. And then we will go back to our class file. Okay, after, after this, we'll go back to the class file. Okay, and, and make sure that you have the mtcars.csv um, download it, okay? All right, so I'm going to open that one. Okay, so we start with running our import libraries. Okay, so This chapter is about visualization. So visualization, we're going to be using matplot library, matplotlib, okay, and uh, the pyplot library. So we, we have a we have a nickname PLT for that uh, set of uh, functions. Uh, there are some visualizations that are done. You know, in a in an easier way, you know, what is called Seaborn, and uh, I don't want to introduce a new uh, library at this point, so we will stick with matplotlib. Okay, uh, but keep in mind that Seaborn, or especially for sc scatter plot, it's a lot easier. Okay, so we have to create figure and axis objects. Figure is the canvas in which you add access objects. You can have just one access object, or you can have multiple access objects. So um, one figure and one plot. Okay, so you want you have one canvas and there is only one plot in it, then you can use a single line of code to get started. Okay, this doesn't draw anything at all. It just creates the canvas and the on the container where you will be putting the visualization. So that's your fig, and, and that's a username. You can give any name you want. So that's a, in, a, in a one single line, you use PLT subplots. Okay, so that creates those two objects. C create the figure, and it'll put an access object. Same thing can be achieved using two lines of code, okay, and, and and you can, you can use the fig size here as well. So you first create the figure using the first line, and then you add the access object. Again, AX1 is our name. It can be any name. It could be just AX. Now, this time, when you have created a figure, and then you're adding plots to it, you use add subplot, okay, not plots, subplot. So 
keep these differences uh, clear. Okay. Can be confusing sometimes. You can use either of these two methods. That is to create one figure and one plot in that figure. Now, one figure in multiple plots, okay, then again, you can do it in one line of code or two lines of code. So, one line of code, you use plot like there, subplots, okay. Now, this time, you have to give the dimension. If you don't give any dimension, then it's just one figure and one axis object. Now, M here is number of rows, M here is number of columns. So you'll have a, a figure and you'll have multiple objects created within that figure. And the access objects are indexed by whatever this name is. Okay, this is the user defined name AX, and then you access them by indexing. And the indexing is regular Python index, 0, 1, 2, 3. So you have first row is 0, second row is 1, third row is 2, and similarly, first column is 0, second column is 1, third column is 2, and so on. So that's how you will access the object, and then you will plot whatever plot you want within that object. Okay. Now, you can do the same thing in, with two lines of code. So when you do that, so you have a figure, so you create a figure, and of course you can give a figure size if you like in there, okay? And then you add subplot. So you use the add subplot like here. Now when you have multiple, multiple, you know, acts or you want multiple objects, then you have to provide, um, these three pieces of information here. It's not just two. So M, N, and then, okay, so here is where it's a little confusing because now this index I is not a Python index. It starts from one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. So uh, that's your access number. Okay, so uh, let's see here. Okay. Now, I'm, th this is an example of this first line of code where you say, say so you're creating both the figure and the axis object. Okay. Uh, and two, three. So let me, let me comment that. And you see that there are six objects created. Of course, you can add spaces here, and I've already discussed all that previously, so I'm not going to go over that part. So here, if you want to access a particular object, okay, I'm, I'm just doing a test here, I'm adding a title so you can see which of these access objects we are accessing with these indexes. So when you use one comma zero, so which one of these access objects is that referring to? The first index is for row, second index is for column, and it is Python indexing. So one comma zero is going to index this plot, okay? Then you can see that, I'm just doing it, I'm just giving a title so we can see what that, uh, you know, what is the object that is getting indexed? So here you see the title test. Of course, this is because I have not added padding and all that, so it's kind of uh, printing on top of uh, the x-axis values from here, you know, uh, which you can adjust, and I've discussed that earlier. So now if I say 1, comma 2, that would be this It's referring to that one. Okay. All right. So now let's uh, let me copy this and paste it below. So now let's 
go back here and suppose we use the second way of indexing okay so so now we have um, no okay. just a figure right so so we, we I've created a figure and I want to do what we just did here with 2 comma 3 but I want to do it individually so so I can give a name right and it is going to be in that figure I add add a subplot So now, when I'm adding new subplots into this figure, you know, we have to tell how many there are in total. And you have to say that in every subplot uh, code. So within this figure, how many there are going to be? So if you say 2 comma 3, which is what we did here, so that is going to be 2 comma 3, 2 rows and 3 columns of plots. Okay. Now, which one is this plot? Okay. Now, that you give with a number. So, now, if I say the second plot is going to be like 4, uh, okay, <laughs> that should be figure. That was the problem. Okay, so so now you see. Uh, uh, the the subplot adds axis in a two by three. Okay, so this two comma three must be repeated in every line, every axis that we are adding. Okay, so it knows that it is a two by three frame. Okay, and then the number is starts from one, one on the top left. Okay, it's like like reading text, right? Left to right, and then next line, and then next line, and so on. So you can see one, two, three, four, five. So the second one is the fifth position. Okay. So, uh, and if I add another one here, say three and call it then it's going to be over here. Okay, so uh, it is important that you understand how the figure and the axis are created. Okay, so figure object and axis object.